Hi, this is Stephen Vig, and I'd like to talk about Mike Adams Golf Ideas. Uh, you can see Mike Adams Golf on Instagram. I've never actually had a golf lesson from Mike Adams, although I'd love to have one sometime. Uh, I mainly got these ideas off the internet, and I thought they'd try and organize them into a slideshow for you. So Mike Adams is a member of the World Golf Teachers Hall of Fame. Mike has given lessons for many years to thousands of golfers at all levels of talent. Mike believes that there is no single type of swing that will work for all golfers. Mike likes to measure and observe students to see them swing and figure out what type of swing will work best for them. Mike was PGA Teacher of the Year in 2016. Uh, if you can go to the ultimategolflesson.com, you can sign up for events that are hosted by Mike Adams and sometimes with his buddy, uh, Terry Rolls. You can see Mike Adams' golf videos. He has a lot of them on Instagram, some of them on YouTube. And Terry Rolls also has golf videos on Instagram and YouTube. Let's see what kind of measurements and observations we can make. Uh, there's a, uh, a video from Pro Golf Gals on YouTube that goes through a few of these. Uh, you can test the ability of the golfer to externally rotate at the shoulder joint. The golfer on the left has more external rotation. The golfer on the right has less external rotation. Better external rotation makes it easier for a golfer to shallow and swing from outside, inside to outside. A golfer with poor external rotation who is trying to swing more in to out might have to close the stance to achieve shallowing. With the shoes on, you can also measure the height of the golfer and compare it to the wingspan of the golfer. A wingspan more than four inches longer than the height matches up with the backswing along the shoulder plane, which is more upright. A wingspan within four inches of the height matches up with the backswing along the torso plane, which is kind of a mid-level backswing. And a wingspan more than four inches shorter than the height matches up with the backswing along the hip plane, which is a flatter backswing. We can also measure the distance from the elbow to the knuckles, which is kind of your forearm length, and compare it to the distance from the elbow to the shoulder socket, which is the about the length of the humerus. If your forearm is longer than your humerus, your downswing plane should be more upright, usually near the shoulder plane. If your forearm is the same length as your humerus, your downswing plane should be in mid position near the torso plane. If your forearm is shorter than your humerus, your downswing plane should be flatter near the hip plane. For me, I have an average amount of right shoulder external rotation. With a driver, I like to close my stance just slightly to help me with shallowing. My height is 73 inches and my wingspan is similar to my height at 72 and a half inches. So my backswing should be mid position near my torso plane. My elbow to knuckle length is 15 and a half inches. My elbow to shoulder socket length is the same at 15 and a half inches. So my downswing should be mid position near my torso plane. You can place a club over the thighs and have the golfer rotate back. A golfer will tend to have either a rear leg post, a center post, or a front leg post. For me, I am a center post golfer. The golfer on the left favors a front leg power source. The golfer in the center uses both legs as a power source. And the golfer on the right favors a rear leg power source. Recentering 
happens earlier with front post golfers. Recentering, which is where you start going forward after your backswing, it begins at P2 in front post golfers, it begins at P3 with center post golfers, and it begins a little later near as you approach P4 with rear post golfers. The right foot should be square with front post golfers. The right foot should have a slight flare with center post golfers, and the right foot should have more flare with rear post golfers. You can see a video called Golf Specific Leg Dominance Test on YouTube by Scott Lynn. Uh, he swings fast while balanced on the right leg with the left leg back and up on the toe. Then you swing fast while balanced on the left leg with the right leg back and on the toe. Then you swing fast with both feet two inches apart and see which produces the most speed and the best shots. For me, being a center post golfer, my ball actually went fastest and furthest and straightest when I swung fast with both feet two inches apart. A rear post golfer often has more horizontal force, also called lateral or glide on the swing catalyst, which is the top tracing on the uh, lower right part of that picture. A center post golfer often has more torque force, which is rotation and spin, on the swing catalyst, catalyst, which is the middle tracing, and a front post golfer often has more vertical force, which is sometimes called jump or launch, on the swing catalyst. That's the lower tracing. And a golfer will usually favor one or two of these forces as the main power source in their golf swing. Of course, some of the long drive uh, golfers are using all three of these forces at really very high levels in order to hit the ball a long way in the live drive, long drive contests. Uh, trail wrist terminology, that'd be the right wrist for me. Again, five possible positions. A trail wrist that is quite palm up is called under. Now, if you move that a little bit more counterclockwise, the next area would be called side under. Then if the uh, right hand was on the right side of the shaft, it'd be called side on. If you keep moving counterclockwise uh, so that the palm is down a little bit, it would be called side cover. And then a trail wrist that is very palm down is called on top. So five positions uh, on that right wrist, and that often dictates a lot of things that happen in the golf swing. A rear post golfer with a side under trail hand grip often has a wider stance, an inside takeaway, a club face that's open when the club is at position two in the backswing, a downswing near the hip path, an inside out path through impact and a high draw ball flight. A center post golfer with a side on hand grip often has a medium width stance, a torso backswing plane, a club face toe up when the club is at position two in the backswing, a torso downswing plane, an in to in arcing corner release, and a straight ball flight. An example might be Adam Scott. A front post golfer with a side cover hand grip has a narrow stance, a shoulder plane backswing, a club face that is more closed when the club is at position two in the backswing, more flex of the left knee at P4, a downswing near the shoulder plane, an outside end swing path through impact, and a fade type of ball flight. Example might be Alex Noren, or Scotty Scheffler or Justin Thomas. What does grip do to spine tilt in the backswing? Side under right hand grip tends to have you bring the club back more inside 
with the face more open and right elbow more tucked. You will have a slight tilt of the spine more to the right on the backswing called a counter swivel. For a side cover right hand grip, that tends to have you bring the club back more outside with the face closed on the backswing and the right elbow more out. You will have a slight tilt of the spine a little bit more to the left on the backswing and that's called a counter tilt. Trail wrist position and downswing plane. Side cover trail wrist often matches up with a downswing plane near the shoulder plane. Side on wrist often matches up with a downswing plane near the torso plane. Side under wrist often matches up with a downswing plane flatter along the hip plane. Backswing right wrist hinge action and forward swing right wrist release action. So a side cover or on top right wrist bends up and out on the backswing and then down and left uh, after impact. A side on right wrist bends horizontal backward on the backswing then horizontal forward after impact and that's called a corner type of release. Side under or under right wrist bends down and in on the backswing, up and out after impact, and that's called an extension type of release. Many front post golfers have a side cover or on top right hand grip, but you'll see all kinds of unusual matchups. For example, Zach Johnson is, is an example of a front post golfer who actually uses a side under grip. Luke Donald is an example of a rear post right hand under golfer. Tiger Woods is an example of a center post golfer with a side on grip. Cameron Champ is an example of a front post golfer. Front post golfers have many characteristics of the stack and tilt golf swing. Bryson DeChambeau is also a front post golfer. So both Cameron Champ and Bryson DeChambeau hit the ball a long ways and they're front post golfers. So you don't necessarily have to be a rear post golfer in order to hit the ball a long way. Uh, Mike Adams and Terry Rolls, their approach to a golf lesson. The first step, of course, is to do the measurements that we discussed earlier in this slideshow. Then they can work on things that open and close the face, things that shift the plane to the right or left, things that shallow or steepen the attack angle, things that allow the golfer to hit the ball further. Uh, Mike and Terry might use a swing catalyst or the sports box AI to help with the lesson. The goal is really to find what works best for this individual golfer based on their unique swing preferences and mechanics. This is not a method approach where all golfers are told to do the same thing. Aaron Badley has taken some lessons from Mike Adams. Aaron Badley now is a very close stance. He was a stack and tilt swinger in the past. Successful stack and tilt swingers are usually front leg post golfers, often with an on top type of trail hand. Aaron is a front leg post and side cover golfer, which normally would tend to give him an outside in swing. However, Mike gave him a close stance to help him hit it more to the right and higher. He can either aim a little to the right and hit a straight ball, or he can aim further to the right and actually hit a draw. A stronger left hand grip helped Aaron with rotation and vertical forces and help him to hit it longer. The left hand takes care of the lower body and ground forces. Squaring up of the left foot helped Aaron to use vertical forces better and hit the ball further. Lee Dravino had a side under grip and was a rear post golfer. A side under grip will tend to make you swing inside out and hit the ball higher, often with a hook, but Lee Trevino preferred to hit a lower fade shot, playing in Texas in the wind, so he opened up his stance. 
John Rahm and Dustin Johnson also are side under golfers who open up the stance and hit fades. Scotty Scheffler is a front post side cover golfer who plays a fade. He has high hands at P4. He's, has, he's a tall person and has a narrow stance. Scotty should have a square right foot. Scotty swings slightly out to end with a face open to the path to hit a fade. Scotty's right foot actually moves more behind him during the downswing, kind of an unusual move, a little like Greg Norman's used to be. Scotty pushes up with the left leg vertical forces, which adds distance and helps him to hit the ball higher, similar to Justin Thomas. Joaquin Neiman had lots of right side bend through impact, which is bad for the back. Joaquin is a very under golfer who was incorrectly taking the club outside on the backswing with a closed face. So in order to square this closed face, he was forced to do a severe right side bend through impact. Right side bend opens the club face, which is an offset to the closed face. Mike Adams had him take his backswing more inside with an open face, tucking his right elbow so that he would not have to do so much right side bend on the downswing. That would help his back. Mike did not try to change his grip because Joaquin's natural swing favors the under position of the right hand. Lydia Ko is a rear post side under golfer. For a while, a coach tried to move her to center post and side on golf, and she hit it shorter and played poorly. Sean Foley asked Mike Adams what to do, and Mike said, go back to her previous rear post and side under golf. She did that, and her club head speed increased, and she went on to be number one in the world. Some flair of the right foot at address will encourage Lydia to be a rear post golfer. Stance can change the shape of this shot. For a side under golfer, the path is to the right, and the tendency is for the golfer to hit a draw. However, the side under golfer can open the stance a little to hit a straight ball and can open the stance more to hit a fade. For a side cover golfer, the path is to the left and the tendency is for the golfer to hit a fade. However, the side cover golfer can close the stance a little to hit a straight ball and can close the stance more to hit a draw. Change the stance width, aim, or foot flare to change the golf swing. A wider stance helps with horizontal forces, as does pushing off the right leg. A narrower stance helps with vertical forces, as does pushing off the left leg. Flaring of the left foot makes vertical force later and torque later. An open stance makes the left leg lock up later. Squaring the left foot makes vertical force happen earlier and breaking to occur earlier. A closed stance makes the left leg lock up sooner. Squaring the right foot for front post golfers allows the golfer to move to the left earlier in the swing. And recentering starts as early as P2. Openers and closers. The right hand under is a closer since it makes you more likely to close the club face. If you are under or side under, you need one of these two openers to open the face. Right side bend with the right elbow tucked in and leading on the downswing is an opener since it tends to open the club face. Dustin Johnson and Joaquin Neiman have used this. Vertical push and standing more upright to the finish is an opener since it tends to open the club face. J.B. Holmes and Justin Thomas both use vertical forces to open the club face. Higher hands at address is a club face opener. Lower hands at address is a club face closer. Some YouTube videos to watch. Travis Fulton uh, has one there. Mike Adams. Five steps to cracking the golf swing. Uh, there's some sports AI uh, presentations. Things on Instagram and YouTube. Mike has talked about a book that apparently is either finished or near finished. Will he ever publish this book? I certainly hope so. 
additional resource, resources. EA Tischler has uh, some YouTube videos at EA Golf Pro. Of course, Terry Rolls. And there's a host of other golfers listed there. Uh, Sportsbox AI and Swing Catalyst are some other resources. In 2016, Mike Adams was inducted into the World Golf Teachers Hall of Fame. Thanks to Mike Adams for his interesting ideas and for his long-standing dedication to the art and science of golf instruction. He's a very interesting guy, and we'd like to thank him for his contribution to golf.